So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you two things uh, to help improve accuracy. One is cleaning your air gun barrel and the other is weighing and sorting your pellets because again, I didn't know that the uh, weights of or the weight of pellets can vary so much uh, in a single tin. And I'll go through that with you today. I'll show you the scale I purchased, uh, how I go about uh, weighing and sorting them uh, so that uh, when it's time to shoot, I'm picking uh, pretty consistent pellets. So two other things I did not know that I just learned when I posted this video for the first time was uh, one, uh, this was by Lee Jordan, that the pellet head sizes can vary. So I am going to use my trusty caliper, okay, to measure the head sizes later on in the video. Um, and uh, another thing from Roel Jackson, uh, again, a range friend of mine, who also stated that be careful about sorting your pellets from different tins because each tin can come from a different factory with a different die mold, so that can make them different. So unfortunately, uh, when I posted the first video, I already sorted three tins uh, and they're all mixed up. So, so again, thank you, Lee, and thank you, Roel, for those two uh, uh, bits of information that I did not know. Um, I'm gonna put that in the video. Um, so anyway, with all that being said, why don't we go right into first cleaning the barrel. Of course, anytime you get a new gun or even if your gun has been shot 500, I don't know, 600 times or however many pellets you've put through it, you probably wanna give it a cleaning every once in a while. Uh, and then once it's been cleaned, you've gotta season the barrel, meaning just shoot 10, 20 pellets through it before you uh, start to try to take some accurate shots. So I have the Hats on Galatian in front of me. Uh, this is a gun I was having, I thought I was having a problem with uh, as far as accuracy. And I cleaned the barrel and I couldn't figure it out. Uh, long story short, it was the pellets I, were, I was using. Uh, one, I wasn't using a pellet that the barrel liked. And then even when I found a pellet that the barrel liked, some of the pellets uh, or some of the 10 shot groups were a little bit off every once in a while, one or two would drop. And that was probably because of the weight of the pellets. So let's get right into cleaning uh, the barrel. I have two ways uh, that I do it. The, uh, my favorite way is the string. This is a, a Mason's line, uh, it's nylon cord. Uh, I've made about five or six loops in it, uh, cut some t-shirt. That's what I have here on the table in front of me. This is just a t-shirt. Uh, this is a real inexpensive and very effective way uh, of doing it. And I have some strips here. What I did was I took the, the liberty of uh, stripping. This is about a two inch and this is a one inch wide strip. And what I'll do, and it's depending on your caliber. So the one and a half, one, you know, this is about one and a half inch strip is good for uh, 22s. And then this is good for my 25s. And what you'll do is just with a scissor, uh, here we go, I'll show you right here in this camera. Just cut squares, you know, it's pretty simple. Now they don't have to be exact, but you know, try to get some consistency. All right, S same thing here. Let me finish cutting the 22. This is the one and a half inch strips. All right. All right, so now what I have is a bunch of strips, roughly about an inch and a half square. Okay, and these I'll use on, on the string. Now what's great about, I've used this already. It's very easy to replace them. I'll show you here on this camera. So what I'm gonna be doing, oh, you can still see me there. So I'll show you here. To get them loose, just simply pull it and it comes loose. Take the next one, okay? It, now because it's a cotton shirt and it's easy, it's already rolled, just take it, roll it, and tie it. Now it doesn't have to be very tight. Same thing with the next one. This is a dirty one, as you can see. Pull it and the cord, you know, comes loose. Take the next one, just roll it up. Okay, slide it in there, about center, halfway through, and pull. And there you go. That's two, already changed in a matter of a few seconds, okay? It's very easy. Again, pull, pull, 
you know, you're pulling the cord and then you're pulling the piece of cotton. Take the next one, roll it up, put it in the, in the loop, and tie it, whoops, okay. Take the next one, roll it up, put it in the loop, and tie it down. So there you go. So I've replaced three of the five in a few seconds. Um, it's very easy to do. All right, so now we have all five of them replaced. Um, again, tension is what keeps them in place. All right. Yeah. So I use this method when I take the shroud and the barrel off of the gun uh, because this can get, it can be pretty hard to, sh you know, to pass this through. Uh, so before you start cleaning your gun, it's recommended, I would say, take off your scope. Um, you don't have to. Uh, it's just the way I do it. I know some people take off the scope, then they have to worry about re-zeroing. Um, I found that even when I take off my scope, as long as I put it back in the same spot, uh, the zero is not off. Okay. Take out the any rounds. Uh, on this, now the great thing about the Galatian is that. There are two things. This shroud unscrews very, very easy, so you don't have to worry about the baffles, uh, you know, causing a problem with snaking through the, the, uh, the cleaning cord. Uh, and then taking it off here is just two screws. Every air gun's pretty much, this, you know, very similar. There are two grub screws, and they let you allow you to take the barrel out. Now, you don't have to take the barrel out, but what's really great about the Galatian is that at the end of the barrel on this side here, uh, there is a screw on where the O-ring, you know, for the, for the probe, there's a probe here. I don't know if you're seeing that. Let's see. So there's a probe. When that probe enters the barrel, there's an O-ring that creates a seal. That O-ring is inside the barrel. But the great thing about the Galatian is it has a screw down tip. So you can unscrew it, take off the O-ring, and really force some, you know, some of these cotton even a little bit heavier through without damaging the O-rings or anything like that. So, oh, by the way, one of the, uh, so the cleaner I like to use is Ballistol. I used to use WD-40 and it was fine. I mean, but the problem with WD-40 is it's corrosive. It seems to be corrosive to the, to the O-ring. So when I would pass it through, it would sort of burn the O-ring. Um, I don't know if it was because it was too thick or what, but anyway, uh, I, I kind of, I kind of found this multi-purpose Ballistol lubricates, penetrates, protects, preserves, seems to be really good. They recommend it for firearms, leather, knives, tools, locks, marine, wood. Anyway, it's rubber. It's great for everything. So if your gun does not have a removable shroud or you can't get to the baffles uh, and it's, it's really an issue for you to uh, clean your barrel that way, one way to do it, and I've seen this plenty of times, is using a straw on the end and putting that straw all the way in until it hits the barrel. Then at that point, you can feed your line, whatever it is you're gonna feed. You know, and that will pass through the baffles here and go right into the barrel port so that you can get it, you know, get the, uh, the tip here on the end. Now, fortunately with this gun, it's pretty simple. Just unscrew and, and I'm, really I would recommend taking off, you know, your moderator or your shrouds uh, most of them do come off today. Here we go. It's very simple. So there you go. That's the the moderators. Now, on most of them too, as well, I didn't have to take off the whole shroud. You could take off the end cap, and in here is a baffle system. You know, here's... But this one has cotton. It's, it's The hats-ons are mixed. They have two baffles and then two cotton pieces. I just find it easier to take the whole thing off. You know, keep it together as one piece. Um, and now the barrel's exposed. So this is a lot easier. Now, you don't, at this point, I don't have to really take the barrel off of the gun. So if you really want to do it this way, it's okay. If you're gonna, if you're gonna clean your barrel with the barrel in the gun, one thing I'm gonna recommend, this is really, really important, and I, I don't see a lot of people doing this, and I don't think they understand why you should do this, but turn your gun upside down. And the reason you want to turn it upside down is because there's a transfer port, and you don't want that junk, dirt, 
gook, oil, everything going into your transfer port, which then goes into your valve, which could possibly go into your bottle. So leaving the gun this way and then pulling, you know, your, your cotton swab through, whatever it is you use, you, what, what's happening is as you're forcing, it's all wet and gooky and it starts to pick up the dirt in the beginning right here. The transfer port's right about here. What happens is all that juice ends up going down into the transfer port, into the valve, and then possibly into your barrel. To avoid that, just turn it upside down and you're good to go. Now, here is a second way. This is some, uh, I call it Weed Whacker line. Uh, you could get this anywhere, Home Depot, whatever, Lowe's, whatever your favorite store is. This one that I have is two and a half millimeters or 0 0.09 inch Weed Whacker uh, line. And what I did was I created, oh, you can't see it. I created a loop on the end here. And it's real easy to do, okay? When you want to create that loop, all you need to do with a lighter, heat up, whoops, heat up the tip, get it nice and warm. See, it starts to bend. Fold it, okay? Blow on it. Don't touch it, it's hot. Well, now it's cool. Now you have a loop, okay? And then what you'll do is you'll burn this connecting piece here and then squeeze them together, all right? And then you'll have, like I have here, a loop, all right? And this is very sturdy. It's, you know, when you melt it, it, uh, it stays in place. You know, if you want to squeeze the tip to make a point. But anyway, that's ver very, very easy so, to do. Here's the, about using this with the barrel in place. This is real simple, has a loop to catch. I'm going to cock the gun back so I can get to it. Pass this loop down the barrel. And because it's plastic, it's not going to damage the rifling, okay? It, it's not very hard. Let's see, now it should be coming out the end here. Okay, now there it is. So now it is right here. All right, let me show you on this other camera. I'm going to flip it over just momentarily because the opening is on this side so you guys can see it. See that little orange piece right there? Now what we can do is take your cotton, okay, roll it up into like a sleeve like that and pass it in. So I'm just pushed it through. Now I'm using a pair of tweezers to grab it. You can see that here on the camera. So now it is inside of the barrel. Now what you can do is a little bit of ballast oil just to squeeze. Now, you don't want to get this gunk all over, so just a tad. Remember, turn your gun upside down and now pull it through, okay? Here it comes, and there is your dirty piece, okay? Now, you'll do that a bunch of times. Now, th that's kind of the harder way to do it, in my opinion. I personally like taking the barrel off, plus I want to preserve that O-ring. Um, I really don't want to see it get burned. I, I prefer to do it taking the barrel off and then pulling it through um, to preserve the o-ring, but you can do it the way I just did now. So with that being said, let's decock it. Let's clean it using the string system, which I really like a lot. Uh, it just, it's just so much more effective. Okay. So if you plan to do the string system, and again, you don't, let's just say you want to use this string and you don't want to take the barrel off for whatever reason, you can take some uh, coated, copper coated wire, pass it down the barrel and use that to grab the string to get it started. So what you're doing is you're trying to grab this end. So let me do, I'll pass, I have a little hook on the end here that I created just using a pair of needle nose pliers. Okay, I just turned it and created that little hook, hopefully you see that. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll pass it down, down the barrel. Now again, this is a 22, so the barrel, 0.22 of an inch. All right, and it'll show up on the other end here. There it is. Let's see, do you see that on the camera? Yeah, see, there you go, right there. And what so what we'll do is, just like we're threading a needle, we'll thread the end of this. Okay, there it goes, I think you see it. And now, it's caught onto that loop. Pull it through a little bit, you know, um, probably, you know, about, a, about not the length of the barrel, but a little less. Now we're going to pull it through 
And what'll happen, you can hold on to this end. See, now I just started, I'm starting to push it through here. Pull it through. And there it goes, comes out the other end. Okay. And by the way, because this is cut, this is coated, it's copper, but it, and copper is soft, but because it's coated in plastic, it will not harm your barrel. So now what you can do is you can thread these all through. Now again, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to damage my O-ring. Um, if you were going to pull it through this way, again, remember, turn it upside down. And I would suggest using slightly smaller uh, patches, you know, cotton from your t-shirt, uh, so that when you're pulling it through, you don't burn the O-ring or, you know, rip the O-ring because you can, you're, you're putting a lot, I'm, I use a lot of force on mine to really get into the rifling, uh, the grooves. Uh, but again, if you're doing it this way, I would say, you know, with the barrel uh, in the gun, then use smaller patches. Okay, so now I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove the barrel and do it the way I like to do it, which is taking the barrel out of the gun. Using the Allen key supplied by the gun maker, I'm going to counterclockwise, back out the screw. There are two barrel screws on my hats on. Many, many guns have two. I don't know too many that have one, although I think some might. So just give it a little spin and that's it. And there you go. Now it's out. Now that you've got the barrel off, on the hats on. This is, in my opinion, the best way to clean it. Uh, so we have on the end here, this is, you see this groove right here? This makes it removable. You also have an O-ring here and an O-ring here. I'm going to remove this O-ring right here. Let's do that. Okay, I'll do that on the camera. Again, gently, you don't want to, you don't want to uh, poke your O-ring. Okay, so I have, let's see, I've grabbed it and gently remove it, okay, and there is, the, there is one O-ring. Now this unscrews. Now the way I screwed it on a little tight, so I'm going to put a little cotton over this and I'm very gently going to grab the end with a channel lock, give it, ah, that's it, just a little break. Now. You can see me remove this and inside there, inside here is the O-ring. Let me show you what that looks like. There it is. Okay. So there is the O-ring that was inside the barrel and that's the probe O-ring. So we'll just leave that, set that aside. So now at this point, this is just a barrel with no O-rings. Uh, that can get damaged by pulling through this this string. Now, the great thing about this is you don't really need to do anything. You can just pass it through the probe side. Again, you want to go in the same direction as the pellets. Um, there's no law. It's just I think it makes sense. Okay, I'm feeding it through. And it... Okay, and there it is. So now I have fed so it do through. On, you don't do this on your fine wood table or, uh, or any of your fine furniture. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just soak each one of these a little bit. Okay. And I'll have a dry one. So the, the fourth one will be dry and then the last one I'll soak. So there you go. All right. And just pull it through. Grab it. Loop it around your hand. Pretty tight. Oh, that's a tight one. That's going to clean good. Now this, this contract, this, um, I guess they call it Mason's line, nylon string is very, very strong. So it's very hard to, that was really, really tight. And you can see the cleaning effect. Okay. So you can see the cleaning effect right here. Let me show you on this camera. Look how black that is. Look how dark, look how dark those are. Whoops. Here we go. All right, see how dark those are? Wow, look at this one here. They are filthy, filthy. The, now this is the fourth one, this is the dry one. And then this is the fifth one that was a little wet. So you can see how this really clean, and it gets into the grooves, the rifling, because I mean, I, I'm telling you, there was like, 
30 pounds of, I don't know, maybe something like 30 pounds of pressure. I was really forcing that, <coughs> forcing that through. Down, it's really nice. When you look down your barrel when it's filthy, sometimes you can't see the rifling fully, like it almost disappears. After you've cleaned it, oh, it, it, you can see the rifling. Now, you can do that until your patches are clean. Now, again, to change this is no problem and, uh, you know, pass it through another time and then pass a few dry ones through if you want, however you want to do it. Um, I don't mind leaving the ballastol in there a little, you know, a little bit of ballastol isn't going to hurt. Uh, at least I don't think it does. So that's how I like to clean my barrel. So as, far as far as using, you know, the weed whacker line, that's okay too. Again, you could do it here. The only thing about the weed whacker line, it's, it's a one shot deal. Like, so here you go, you feed it through, you know, you get to the other end. Okay. Now you put a, you know, you put one through and then you, you, you pass it through. It, it, it kind of, you know, it's okay. Um, I know they have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of these products online uh, that they sell, you know, these kind of with the cable, with the, you know, the string at the end and you pull it through. Yeah, I guess that's okay. But, you know, for, for a nickel or a dime, you know, this is a lot cheaper, just as effective. Um, I don't, not a big believer in buying any of those gimmick items uh, that they sell out there. And I'll tell you right now, the string is definitely the best. Um, something else that's not too bad, uh, but again, kind of takes some work, is the cleaning pellets. Now these are 22 cleaning pellets. Hey, let me see. So these are 22 cleaning pellets, okay? Um, they're not bad. I mean, you, you, if you want to scrub your barrel, this is also not a bad way to do it. So let's just see. I'll show you here. Take two of them, okay? Put them into the end of your barrel. Put one into the end of your barrel, dry. Now I have a stick that is 0.22 or roughly 0.22 in diameter, a little smaller. I think it's 0.2. And I start feeding it down, okay? And then I'm using this long stick. Then what I'll do is I'll put a drop of ballastol in there and then put the next one, two of them in a row. Feed that one down a little bit, okay? All right. Oops, a little bit more ballastol, okay? I'll let that soak a second. While that's soaking now, I will push it through, but not all the way through, okay? So I'm gonna push it through, I have a mark on here, to about right there, okay? Push it through, turn it around, do the same thing, push it through, I can feel it spinning as I am pushing the stick through. So the rifling is catching these cords. Now, because this is a very soft wood, again, it's not going to damage your barrel. It's not going to damage the rifling. And now for the last time, I'm going to push it through. Here. Here we go. And let them pop out. There you go. Now, I'm going to tell you, that was a good scrubbing. Here are the two. Here are the two black. Uh, cotton pieces and they still are coming out black so you could do it a few more times but again this is a great way to clean the barrel once your barrel is clean you'll season it by shooting about 10 or uh, 15 20 shots through it and then you're good to go um, so the second thing for accuracy uh, that I'm going to talk about now is weighing uh, and sorting your pellets so the first thing you'll need is a digital scale now one thing I have to say about these digital scales, there's a whole bunch of them out there. I'm sure there's a lot of good ones. I happen to pick this one. Uh, I like it. It was priced right. Um, I paid 18, I'm looking over at my screen. I paid 18 bucks for this on Amazon and it seems to be very, very accurate. One thing about these scales, when you're weighing, some people, I've heard people complain. Every one of these scales has complaints uh, about inaccuracies and things of that nature. Well. You want to keep them on a very stable table that doesn't vibrate. Uh, a sol I have a concrete floor here. I have a solid table. When you're weighing, you don't want to be putting your elbows on the table, shaking anything that could throw off. Because we're talking about, I mean, grains here. So it's, it's really, really fine measurements. Um, another thing is you don't want to, you know, bang your scale around, drop it. Uh, you want to keep the cover on it. You know, you want to really take care of it just because it, it is very delicate um, and you're doing delicate uh, weighing. So anyway, the one I got was or is this, uh, it's called a Jamber Digital 
uh, milligram pocket scale from Amazon. Okay, here, let me show, I'll show you the box. All right, so here is the, the box. Here is the uh, notation. Here's the cover. Here's what the scale looks like. All right. So anyway, I really like it. Let me show you the procedure to calibrate it. Every scale has to be calibrated. They come with this 50 uh, grams. Yeah, these are grams, not grains, because this is pretty heavy. This is like the weight of a coin. Uh, so I believe it's 50 grams. And the way to do that, very simple. I mean, you'll have instructions, but I'll just go over it really quick. Turn on your machine. Hold down the mode key until it says calibrate, or C-A-L. Press the mode key again. It tells you the target weight, which is 50 grams. Take your 50 grams, which comes with your, whoop, don't bang the table like I just did, and it passed. Okay, once it's passed, remove it, you're done. What I have here is a brand new tin of JSB uh, Jumbo Heavy Diablos, 18.13, brand new sealed. But I also have two tins that I already sorted. I've, I went through tons and tons of pellets. And the reason I'm gonna open a brand new one for you on camera is to show you how they vary. I mean, I'd be surprised if they came out, you know, all weighing very close. I would say they went from 17.7 uh, grains to 18.5 almost, or 18.4 something grains. So that, that's a real wild swing. So what I did was I created two tins of 18.1s and I labeled them. And what you'll see is one says, let's see, one says one, uh, 18.15 or more and the other one says 18.15 or less. What you want to do is make sure that you have two separate tins and why I picked 18.15 is because the pellets come at 18.13. I figure if 18.15 was the somewhere around the middle of the scale where it came in from 17.6 to like 18.4 or 18.5, somewhere in that range, I figured, you know what, let's, let's pick a number and then somewhere in the middle and split them out. This way, if it's 18.15, it can only be 18.15 to 18.4. That's not too much. Or on the other end, 18.15 to 17.6 or 17.7. Let's do this. Let me open this up. Everything is on. I'm gonna open up a brand new tin here, okay? And at random, I'm just gonna start. Wow, these are packed in there. All right, so I'm gonna take my covers off. Let me see, I want you to be able to see this. I'm gonna move over a little bit. All right, so all I'm gonna be doing is sorting them one at a time. Let's see, you can see that right there. Okay, and you can see me there. Now set your scale to grain. Keep your, try to keep your hands off the table. And I'm gonna start grabbing them one at a time. 18.34. So first one, 18.34. I'm gonna drop that in the, the more, the heavier. 18.28. 18. So that's going to go in the less. 18.34. 17.9. That is going to go. Whoops. That is going to go into the less. So I just, I know this is tedious work, but it made a difference in my hats on, in my accuracy. So I regulated the hats on, cleaned the barrel, and sorted the pellets. Those three things really did improve my, my accuracy. So that's why I'm showing you this right now, 18.2. Now, if you'll notice, I have many more heavier than lighter, okay? Uh, now, this tin was filled. I just happened to shoot it out. It's not that most of them come heavier, you know, uh, excuse me, lighter. Um, they do come, they're, they're, they're split down the middle. When I sorted two tins, these two tins were equally, pretty equally f filled. Um, so don't think that just because you see a lot less in here uh, that most of them come lighter 
than heavier. No, no, they're split down the middle. So I'll spare you the boredom of sorting pellets, uh, but the, you can see how they are pretty much split down the middle. Um, it, it's just, it is important to sort. You can sort them any way you want. If you want to make finer buckets, uh, maybe 18 and less, 18 to 18.2, and then anything greater than 18.2, that's fine too. But anyway, you, you can figure out, you know, whatever works for you, however precise you want to get. Uh, it's just important, I think it is important at least to split them into two buckets uh, so that the, 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 the variance is not so much. So the other two items that contribute to consistency include not mixing your tins, as I just mentioned, and I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I learned from Roel. Um, I did, again didn't know that they come from you know each tin can come from different factories um, and have different dyes, so I guess they could be shaped differently. So the other item from Lee is the uh, pellet head size. Again, I didn't know that they vary so much. I just did a few, and uh, there was some variance in them from 5.49 to 5.53. So anyway, I'm going to pick up a few, show you in the camera. Uh, I'm just using a digital caliper from. Uh, um, Harbor Freight, inexpensive, 20 bucks. Uh, Pittsburgh, uh, you can pick one up. Now here, I'm just gonna start grabbing. Now these tin, these are the, uh, I have a less and a more, just to see if the more are larger, you know, maybe have, that's why they're heavier, because they have a heavier head size. But let me start from the lesser. Um, and we have 5.48, okay? That's one. Pick up another one at random. Make sure I'm zeroed. I am zero millimeters. Put it in there. Squeeze the same pressure. 5.50. Okay, not too much variance there. 5.48. All right, they look pretty consistent right there. 5.5. So, so that I mean, these are slight. Now remember, I'm pulling from the the the. Um, 18.15 or less. These are the lighter pellets. 5.42. Wow. Okay. That's a pretty big head size. Make sure I'm zeroed. I am. 5.46. Now let me make sure I'm zeroed. Yes, I am zeroed. So that's even larger head. And this is all from the lighter tin. One more from the lighter tin. 5.42. Okay. That's pretty small. Now I'm going to go to the larger tin, the heavier tin. Make sure I'm zeroed. I am 5.42. Here's another one. 5.38. Uh, let me just make sure. Yep, let me make sure I'm zeroed. Yep, I am. So they really do vary, even from the larger tin. It doesn't matter on the weight. 5.51. Make sure I'm zeroed. Yes, I am. Here we go. 5.47. So Anyway, I don't want to kill it, but you can see how the pellet head sizes can vary. Uh, so if you want to go one step further, sorting them by weight and then sorting them by head size, you can do that as well. And remember, just keep the tin separate. Only sort a tin, you know, unless you know that they came from the same factory or same location, which I don't know how you would know that. Uh, but again, I hope this helps and helps your accuracy. Thanks.